Right, Rory Butcher's car remains in the pit lane, and uh, that hopefully will be able to join the grid. There is Jade Edwards, whose car, despite all the damage, is on the grid, starting 27th, which is uh, an amazing effort by the BTC racing team. You wouldn't know that was uh, a car that was damaged a couple of hours ago. Gordon Shedden is still in the garage as well, but again, if they can at least join in at the end of that green flag lap, we've got just over a minute to the start of the formation lap. So there is the grid. Well, after everything else that we've had thrown at us today, Tim, then you put the rain in for the last race that the teams i think will be quite pleased to leave thrux and it's been a really hard weekend for them in some ways yeah i mean the, the cars went to the grid in full dry setup we then saw a little bit of indecision before most of the if not all of the cars went on to wets which then meant that the mechanics were trying frantically to um to get the uh, uh dampers changed there's jelly on wets blue sidewall so they're making a few softening off the dampers getting the wets on in time Oliphant is on slicks. Look, also on the front row. That's a brave shout. You might go mm. for it from the rear, but that's a brave shout from the front. And, of course, the pressure is on the teams, not only to make the right choice, but to get them fitted to the car in time. So if anybody made a late call or that therefore spilled over, then there could be a penalty coming. But uh, I'm sure the teams, well drilled as they are, will have been able to uh, address that as the 32nd board is then shown. The grid is cleared and the cars will be released on to the formation lap very shortly. There is Josh Cook, who starts 11th. He is, by the look of it, on slicks, I think. He's had a green sidewall, I can see. So yeah, apparently he's being investigated for not having the wheels on in time. All right. So there's an investigation going on for Cookie. OK. But as I say, it looks like he's also on slicks. Definitely slicks. Yeah. Again, brave. So green flag is waved and the formation lap underway then. So Tom Oliphant, we know, on the front row is on uh, slick tyres. There's going to be quite a lot of tyre spotting, I think, as we can pick up shots of the cars on the first few laps of this race. But it's a, a greasy circuit that we have then for uh, round three of the championship. I mean, Oliphant is going to be really a hostage to slaughter here because all the wet tyre cars are going to be much, much faster. He will be slowing down massively for the corners whilst, every, whilst the wet cars can go a lot quicker. You know, the, it may be the right thing at the end of the race, but when you start at the front, you know, you, you, you're going to get hit by somebody and nerfed out by, by being so much slower. He's going to really struggle. Look, he's spinning the wheels up now. So Tom Oliphant then is up against it. He's not the only one making that choice, of course, on the slick tyre. Stephen Jelly on pole position for race three of the day. Tom Oliphant with him at the front of the grid. Row two is Ash Sutton and Aidan Moffat, who normally excels in these conditions. Colin Turkington's on the third row with Tom Ingram alongside him. Then you've got Jason Plato and Dan Robottom on the fourth row. And row five, Jake Hill and Dan Kamish. Uh, Josh Cook, now being investigated, uh, is on row six. Jack Goff alongside Ollie Jackson and Dan Lloyd come next, ahead of Aaron Taylor-Smith and then and Sam Osborne, 16th on the grid. 17th, Carl Bordley. Gordon Shedden is there. He'll start at the back ahead of Rory Butcher, his brother-in-law. Uh, so Gordon Shedden giving up his 18th on the grid. 19th, Jack Butel. 20th is Sam Smelt, ahead of Adam Morgan and Nick Hamilton. Then it's Chris Smiley, who uh, was troubled with overheating in the first race. Rick Parfitt had a throttle position uh, indicator sensor problem. That put him out. Rory Butcher then 25th uh, on the grid, but he'll start at the back. Tom Chilton. 26, it was a fuel pump failure that did for him. Jade Edwards is there, Glyn Getty uh, should be next on the grid, but we know that car's not going to make it. And Andy Neat also absent from the back of the grid. So no Glyn Getty, no Andy Neat. And as I say, you've got uh, Gordon Shedden and uh, Rory Butcher then starting at the rear, not in their grid positions because they have just joined in. Others are being investigated for not having the wheels done up at the correct time. We hear that Tom Ingram is now being investigated as well. In terms of ballast, it says you cross the line. So again, 75 kilos for Josh Cook, 66 for Dan Kamish, 57 for Jake Hill, all the way down to nine kilos for Tom Oliphant. It's a mix of front and rear wheel drive cars. It's a mix of those on wets and slicks. And already the officials are busy. Yeah, I mean, also Tom Oliphant's had another look at the circuit now. Um, you know, the driver needs to make, have the courage of his con own convictions. If he thinks it's OK to go with slicks, carry on. But otherwise, mm. you could dive in the pits and hope that there's a, a safety car. But he's going to the grid, so he's comfortable with his choice. It's going to be a really challenging 
first few laps to try and get the heat into the tyres, but let's see whether it's a, a decision that uh, pans out for him. So Oliphant then for second on the grid. We know that Josh Cook is on slicks. There are one or two others as well. Remember, green sidewall slicks, blue sidewalls, wet tyres. But the other element to the story is they had to be fitted at the correct time in that countdown to the race, not at the last second. So that's why the officials are looking at certain drivers, certain teams, to make sure that the work had been done uh, before we got to the uh, correct part of the countdown procedure. There, Jade Edwards comes to the grid, and as you see, Gordon Shedden and then Rory Butcher will round out the grid in that very hastily taped up car of Rory Butcher. Yeah, I've had it from Token now that after the race starts, Cook and Ingram will receive a 30 second penalty. Oh, for not having the wheels on at the correct time. So uh, you go through everything else over the race weekend and a tiny little, if you like, administrative error like that can do for you. But yeah, you, know, you make the call, but if you don't get the work done in time, then it's still in operation, uh, then uh, it goes against you. So we've got two penalties then to be factored into all of this. Round three of the championship is set to go at Thruxton as the lights out, they slither away from the line. Good start by Jelly, and now you'll see those on wet start to pounce forward. So it's Jelly that leads away. Ash Sutton goes second as they head into Allard for the first time. Colin Turkington up the curb as he tries to go third, but a good getaway by Jelly there. Yep, he got away fine as expected. Oliphant struggled with wheel spin and has already left seven positions. All the cars at the front rear wheel drive anyway, apart from Ingram, the first front wheel drive car. Who's got to push on because he's got this 30 second penalty hanging over him as they're going through. Turkington gains a place on the inside line. Out of the complex then. First time of asking. The field pushes on. Stephen Jelly leading the way. And so the recruit returning to WSR up front. The progress of Shedden and Butcher is going to be interesting. Here, where the conditions look to be getting worse, don't they? Yeah, that's what I thought on the uh, the warm-up lap. We can actually see some spray coming off the tyres. So you definitely want to be on wet. You're still travelling at very high speed here. So poor old Oliphant's really got his hands full around the back here. Ingram's making good progress there. Down the inside into Church. But whatever he does, he's going to be affected by this potential penalty as the cars now come down towards the chicane for the first time. Stephen Jelly leads, but right on his tail, Ash Sutton is taking the battle to him. Lap one of 16, about to be completed. BMW leads the way. Well, Stephen Jelly, his first wet race in this new to him BMW. Uh, Ash Sutton, we know, is the rainmeister, don't yeah. we? So uh, it's, uh, Sutton must be thinking, well, this is definitely going to be mine. Of course, remember how the BMWs work relative to the Infinity in the wet at Brands Hatch last November. So Jelly leads up to the complex for the second time. Sutton makes that move to the outside for the first element of the complex. Can he get the switch back? He tries for the outside line going into Cobb, which is the inside for Seagrave. He gets run out wide. There's a rub between them. Sutton goes through, makes it stick, and Turkington's about to pounce as well because Colin Turkington will go through on the inside up into second spot. Job done. Well, I don't think I've ever seen an overtake done quite like that at the complex. That was absolutely fantastic. He just cut back from a wide turn. Look, um, Jelly defends the inside, real wide turn in, over the curb, and drives all the way round the middle part of the complex to give him the inside for the last part. Fairness, Jelly gave him plenty of room, and in doing so, lost out to his teammate Turkington on the exit, but a fabulous, typical Sutton overtake. So the cars then now accelerate their way down towards the chicane, up to the end of lap number two. And those trying to make some progress forward. Well, Josh Cook has slipped back. In fact, he's down into 21st place. And Jade Edwards with damage back in the pit lane. Damage sustained earlier on, still giving a problem. Moffat goes through on the inside there of Jason Plato. Good battle between these two. This is the fifth and sixth places. So at the end of the lap, as they come over the line, Jelly, it is leading the way with Sutton uh, now ahead of him. Of course, the trade of place between those two. So Sutton goes ahead, Turkington second, Ingram is up to third, and Jelly down to fourth. Fifth is Moffat, sixth is Plato. The fastest lap has been done by Gordon Shedden. He's up into 13th place now. So Shedden is making the progress in this race that we kind of hope for in race two. Yeah, but clearly in race two, he was carrying some mechanical accident damage yeah. over from race one. That's why he couldn't make the progress and why they've been working so hard on the car. Ingram is in the pit lane as well. So Tom Ingram, shown as being in the pits, looking at the timing screen. So the order is going to shuffle again here as you see the battle going on. And there is Tom Ingram. He's on wet, so it's not for tyres. So he's got a problem to, I'm afraid, just round out what's been a, on the whole, decent day. But... Away he goes. Now, that, we are being told, has been 
a stop-go penalty, so rather than adding time on at the end, but none of these penalties have actually come up on the timing screen on the message line, so they're no. a little bit confusing at the moment. And we haven't heard anything about Josh Cook either. No, exactly. Normally, if a driver gets a penalty, that's communicated on the timing screen to the teams. There's a little uh, penalty warning as well in the data. Anyway, for the moment, let's look at the track, because there you've got Moffat versus Plato. This is still for fifth and sixth places as they drop down towards the chicane and right where their rhythm is down Camish in seventh place but Sutton now leading Turkington the gap was half a second last time through one thing these conditions does do is it negates to a certain extent some of the uh, the weight penalty you have as Goff goes through on row bottom must have got a very good exit from the chicane that time Jack Goff um, but it does sort of nullify some of the loss of time and pace that you get from carrying the extra weight now, I've just seen a black flag going out at the start line, which suggests that somebody is being given a penalty and warned to come into the pit lane. We'll try and chase that as the leaders come out of the complex then. There you've got Dan Robo on the head of Gordon Shedden now, so the two teammates getting themselves together. Robo dropping back a little bit in these conditions. Shedden pushing forward as we work lap four of the 16 in this race. Sutton to Turkington, the gap is eight tenths. Jelly third. Now, where has Oliphant fallen to? He's down in 19th place on those slick tyres. Yeah, and if I have a look at his lap time, he's doing a 127 Seven, as opposed to the leaders doing 23. So he's four seconds off. Well, there is Shedden, about to make the move against Dan Robottom. Up on the inside line, through he goes. So he gains that place. It's up the advantage. Yeah, this is a much more Shedden-like drive, isn't it? Mm. Um, as Cook has taken his 30-second penalty. And... Oh, whoa, nice little bit of rallying there for Nick Hamilton. Bit of a Scandinavian flick, I think, into the chicane. Got away with that, which was a good save. Right, Moffat versus Plato coming up towards the line then. They will go through, and uh, Josh Cook has just pitted. He has gone back out as well. So if these are stop-go penalties, uh, then they are uh, affecting the order accordingly. They're going way out wide is Aidan Moffat. Ingram is in the pits again, or has had a pit stop, and has gone on to slicks, we understand. But trouble is, he's now lost a lap. Yeah, a lap down, he can't recover, um, even if there was a safety car. No, exactly. So he can't see any gain in that at all, actually. This is Tom Chilton up the inside of Carl Bordley and goes through, so he picks up the place. Chilton is absolutely flying there. He's another driver coming up from way, way back on the grid. The next target for him is Sam Smelt. Rory Butcher's Toyota, again showing the skulls of Battle of the Day. That's still down in 19th place, but up front, Ash Sutton's doing a really good job here, getting away 1.4 seconds to the good. Actually, he could go for fastest lap, Ingram. Yeah. And uh, looking at the last lap, um, Oliphant went round in a 25 1 and a d only a second slower than Sutton. Yeah, that was a point for it. Yeah, so it is coming to the slick car. Yeah, a 122 is the best lap of the race from Gordon Shedden. is here. Moffat and Plato go toe to toe. This is for uh, fourth and fifth, remember? And Plato goes through on the outside line, but Moffat gets a little bit of dirt on the inside, breaks late, dives back through. Great racing between the pair of them here. They scrabble their way towards the line. Moffat again with a rear wheel drive car squirming underneath him as they go over the line. Heading now down towards the right hand of Allard. Then you have Gordon Shedden on the inside line trying to gain places, and he gets ahead of Camish, who goes out wide, struggling for traction. Shedden carving his way through the pack here. Sutton leading, Turkington is second, Jelly third, Moffat is fourth, Plato fifth, and sixth as they went over the line was uh, Ollie Jackson. Best lap of the race, just up, Oliphant on those slick tyres. Oh, there you go, the tide has turned already. Yeah. Uh, but can he make enough progress now? I mean, Oliphant is a total of 16 seconds behind the leader. It's not inconceivable. Yeah. Not inconceivable. The road is drying out sufficiently. He's lapping quicker than everybody ahead of him, obviously, because he's done the fastest lap of the race. There he is. And now let's see. Part of the problem is going to be the time loss getting through the traffic. He's not down to pure pace. And here he is then looking for a way to get past Jake Hill and Tom Chilton. Is he going to be able to find a way around there? No, he'll slot back in. But suddenly that BMW, as the tyres work better on the road surface, comes alive. Yeah, I mean, he survived those that, that first couple of laps. That was the danger of starting at the front on slicks, that you get nerfed off, but he survived it and kept his powder dry to fight now. Obviously, he needs to use wetter parts of the track to, uh, uh, to, to pass on, but the grip differences will be so huge that he should be able to get past easily. And 
Chris Smiley is another one doing absolute best in sectors, and so too is Adam Morgan. So there's more evidence of people on slicks there. I was going to say, watch the traction of the BMW off the uh, chicane because he can probably drive up the inside <laughs> of them across the start finish line. Right, so you've got then Chilton up into 16th place, and the fastest lap is going to get traded around here as Plato gets ahead of Moffat finally. But Moffat tries to fight back on the outside going up towards Cobb. Jason Plato's had a good first day back at the office, hasn't he? He stays ahead of Moffat. Ollie Jackson, he's next in the queue. And look at Moffat, he's not giving up. He goes to the outside line. Plato's on the defensive here very definitely as Jackson goes one side, Moffat goes the other. Shannon is right there as well and two places lost for Plato. Moffat gets past him on one side, Jackson on the other, Jackson goes out wide. Plato retaliates and goes back ahead of him and Shannon is eager to make ground as now Moffat runs out wide. Plato's ahead of him. So is Jackson, so is Shedden, so is Lloyd. Moffat's got a problem. He has. He's got a right. problem and he's pulled right off. Um, the other shown on our timing screens, Jake Hill has... Um, has the dry tyres on, but his lap times would suggest not, so not sure. Let's have a look, because he has fallen away a bit, has he not, as the cars now steam up towards the chicane once more. This is lap seven, then. The race leader, Ash Sutton, getting away from Turkington. The gap is up to just under a second. The cars flick their way through the chicane. Actually, I say that, David, sorry to interrupt, but he'll set the fastest first sector of anybody on this lap. Um, so he is the one that is in the pound seat. Now, Hill and Oliphant are now 12th and 13th. Personal best on that lap. Cavish and Robottom into the pit lane then to try to go on to slick tyres. You've got to stay on the lead lap. That's the whole drama of this. Tar stop is one thing, we're not talking four seconds here, so you've got to try and stay on the lead laps, it's a gamble, and Jake Hill's car is also, you can see it now, picking back places. Ingram has done the fastest lap, he was worth trying those slicks, even though he's a lap adrift, he's done the fastest lap. Yeah, and, uh, well, we remember Jake Hill doing this at Brands Hatch, don't we? Coming through on slicks in the Volkswagen CC. He is, if, if anyone was going to do it, he was the one. Look, Look at him, that. carving past his teammate. Oh. The grip difference is huge. And Oliphant on slicks does exactly the same thing, comes charging past as well. So tyres, again, making this into a real lottery. Ash Sutton at the moment, though, has a much, much bigger advantage. 1.7 seconds over Colin Turkington. Now, there is Jake Hill. As I say, Josh Cook has done the fastest lap of the race, but Jake Hill could go yet quicker. Look, he's just going to come steaming up alongside Jason Plato, who ain't going to give up without a fight into the chicane, and Jake swaps sides. Plato <laughs> runs out wide, misses out the chicane, gets back on, gets in the way a little bit of uh, Tom Oliphant on his slick tyres, but Jake's away and gone. Yeah, that really hurts. Oliver didn't it because he's uh, lost a lot of ground with yeah. Hill and uh, that really sets Hill free does it Oliver will quickly get past Plato but that cost him a lot of track position right that's Jake going third he was 5.4 seconds behind the leaders at the start of this ninth lap Jake Hill to win here is a real possibility his last lap was a 1 minute 20.7 the leader Ash Sutton 125 Point one. So Jake is absolutely flying. You can see how quickly he's closing on Turkington ahead of him. Uh, the fastest lap, Josh Cook, in the 118s. But, of course, he's a long way out of sequence after his uh, earlier penalty that he had to serve. Right, this is for second place now. Hill right on the back of Turkington. Now, the team would have been on the radio to Turkington to say that he's on, um, on slick, so no point in even trying to fight him. And also to tell him to let his teammate through, Oliphant, who's now right behind him. Watch the speed that Oliphant has through here. He'll just be able to drive round the outside. And it's raining again, we understand. So if you're on slicks for the moment, it might be OK, but the road might ebb away. Adam Morgan's another man on the charge now up into, uh, what, 13th place, because he too is making good progress on the right tyres for the conditions for the moment. As look, they slide their way out of the chicane. Now, that looks a lot, lot wetter than it was a lap ago. The nice warm slicks for Jake Hill are about to give him the race lead, but can he stay there? Hill takes the advantage. Jake Hill leads at Thruxton, but look, the rain is coming. Now, those slicks are going to be nice and warm, but Ash Sutton might yet be able to get his lead back. The weather gods have certainly livened up the last race. Oh, no, it's all gone wrong for Jake Hill. Watch, he's getting... He's I know he's in the lead now, but <laughs> this can't stay. He'll reach the point suddenly where his slicks will just lose temperature. He's holding on to it for all he's worth at the moment as Oliphant takes Sutton for second.
He does indeed, so the slicks. And also, it doesn't look as though the, the, the track surface is consistent. It looks wetter at certain parts, so there are elements of Thruxton where the slicks will still work better than others. And it's slick shot cars one and two, Hill and Oliphant then. Jake Hill, remember, started ninth on the grid, so he's managed to, uh, with uh, slicks and front wheel drive, get ahead of Tom Oliphant as the cars come through. White flag there, meaning there's a slow moving car out on the circuit somewhere. This is the drier part of the circuit, and there you can see. Uh, Aiden Moffat off in the background as the leaders come up Woodham Hill. So Slicks, Slicks first and second. Hill ahead of Oliphant. Third in the background is Ash Sutton. Fourth is Colin Turkington. I think Oliphant's catching Hill again. Out of the chicane comes then Jake Hill. The gap is down between the pair of them. They head up now towards the timing line. And as they come through, it is Hill to Oliphant with that margin. Well, it's being shown as five seconds and indeed Oliphant I'm hearing has got a penalty because the timing screen puts him into third place so he's been given a penalty yeah I believe it might be I didn't say it because I didn't want to jinx him but I think it might have been because he was ahead of his pit box on the right. start line I looked at it and it looked marginal but the camera angle wasn't uh, very good but it sounds like that's what it's for so being out of position at the start that did for Carl Bordley in race two so we'll try and have a look at that but uh, Tom Oliphant not being shown on the timing screen, strangely, but he's been given this penalty. Yes, he's just ahead of the white line, isn't he, on his grid yeah. box? Yeah. Well, we remember it happening to Plato, we yeah. remember it happening to Camish. It's a very easy mistake to make. Right, so right now we have then the Tom Oliphant BMW with this five-second penalty running second on the road. But you add the five seconds to the race time, that means on the corrected classification he's actually third at the moment. It gives Ash Sutton another place back. But Oliphant is still storming along and trying to make the most of the track surface as it is. So he's caught up to Jake Hill. He wants to get past, but then he needs to start to push, obviously, and try and pull a gap of five seconds. And that's Chris Smiley having a wild old ride. He's on slicks as well. He just about caught that. Well held, yeah. That would have been a big moment. So he survives the moment as they come up towards the chicane. Teammate Tom Ingram is there. Still the fastest lap of the race is that of Josh Cook, who's down in 22nd place as Dan Lloyd goes round the outside of Smiley. Used to be teammates, of course, at BTC. Let's have a look at that moment coming. Whoa, whoa, oh, so sideways out of church. And that's the save of the day. And that's because the rain is getting much heavier for sure. And there's the evidence of that as the cars come through. So you've still got this mix of those on wets and slicks and struggling is Stephen Jelly, Jack Goff to the outside of him as they come up towards the complex, the Cooper to the inside line coming into Cobb, the mid part of the complex, Jelly will have the inside line for Seagrave and goes back ahead. We're on lap 12 of 16, who is going to come out on top? Sutton is coming back at the top two as the wet tyres start to work again. It is Hill leading, it is Oliphant second on the road and Ash Sutton in real terms, is three seconds back from Jake Hill. It's between Hill and Sutton at the moment this race, given Oliphant's penalty. Yeah, definitely. We just look the, the conditions. Jake Hill seems to be mastering the conditions. Camish back in the pits. Remember, he changed to uh, to slicks. Maybe he's changed back to wets. Possibly so, as the cars come up towards the chicane. Jason Plato having a go at Colin Turkington here to try to gain which fourth place coming into the braking zone. Rain falling, wipers on, and Plato goes through. So the front-wheel drive Astra goes ahead of the rear-wheel drive BMW 3 Series. Jason Plato out of the chicane then. The Power Max Racing Astra gains fourth spot, and Hill to Sutton is down, 2.2 seconds. So the pendulum is swinging back Ash Sutton's way here. I, I honestly don't know how Jake Hill's hanging on to this. If I was I'm looking at Paul O'Neill and we're shaking our heads, we would not want to be driving a car on slick tyres round Thruxton at this circuit. You know, the average speed is still 100 miles an hour. And look, here comes Sutton now with more grip than Oliphant. He's going to make the move, isn't he, on the inside here as they come out of the complex up towards Noble and the Infinity on wet tyres. Now as the track surface starts to favour the wets again, goes through into second place. So now it is game on. Hill versus Sutton. You can see last time Ash was much quicker. The margin between them was 2.2 seconds. It's going to be down and down and down for the remainder of the lap. And it won't be long before Sutton's in a position to try to make the move for the lead. <laughs> Did you see how close Sutton was to the edge of the track there? He was right on the white line exiting Goodwood. And that again, that's 120 miles an hour. And if he just even touched the grass, he'd have been off. You're on board with Sutton now as they come 
once more at Woodham Hill, heading towards the chicane. This is the end of uh, lap 13. Hard on the brakes, down through the gears, turn right, then left, then right, flick through the chicane, avoid the markers there to try and stop you cutting the chicane. And look how much closer he has got to Jake Hill. He was over two seconds back at the start of the lap. At the end of it, the margin between them is 11 tenths. Yeah, and a second quicker on that lap. But the, the rain is just ebbing and flowing, different parts of the track. He may be quicker overall, but Hill is still doing a masterful job. Oh, look, 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 he just lost it a bit there, got out on the wetter part of the track as well. He's losing tyre temperature as Jake Hill. It's getting harder and harder to hang on. This is either win it or bin it, I think. Somebody else that deserves credit is Gordon Shedden. He's up into fifth place. Uh, he's got himself ahead of Turkington, Dan Loy, Jack Goff. They're all making progress forward as well. So you can see the order, but it's jumbled at every corner. As now Sutton goes for the inside line. The wet work, he's got the grip, he's got the traction, he's got the lead. And Ash Sutton then goes through. The man that started the day on pole position for race one leads, but Jake Hill comes back at him. Fantastic. Wet versus slicks, and Jake's going to go back through. On a drier part of the circuit, Hill tries to get back on the inside line. He can't quite do it, but what a drive. Yeah, just to use a little bit of the dry track to tuck underneath, but he didn't dare risk it into, uh, into church. And, and, and Sutton knew he wouldn't try, so he, he just ran it round the outside. No way Hill can break as late on the slicks as Sutton. So I think Sutton's got this now. So out of the chicane they come. Hill slides the forward focus, heading up now towards the timing line once more. So up to the end of lap 14, two to go. Sutton leads, Hill is second. In third place, on the road is Oliphant, but on the corrected times, Plato is now third. Oliphant is down to fifth, because Shedden's up to fourth with the penalty for Oliphant. Turkington is sixth, Dan Lloyd goes through seventh, eighth is Jack Goff, ninth is Stephen Jelly, who's dropped back in the pack. In tenth place, it is Ollie Jackson. Eleventh, Aaron Taylor-Smith. Chris Smiley was 12th last time over the line, but he's dropped away. So 12th is Osborne, 13th is Chilton, 14th is Smelt, 15th is Smiley. Well, we talked about, uh, about your changing fortunes over the weekend when Sutton got turned around in race one. We said he's going to have to build for race three to get the uh, get the points he wants. And the, the reverse grid, a good drive in race two, the reverse grid put him on the second row, and now he looks like he's going to win race three. Now there is Josh Cook still charging, but of course after his earlier penalty he's a lap adrift then, but he's showing the pace, he's done the fastest lap, a drama there, Bordley has got involved with Butcher, and those are two very crumpled cars. They're not going anywhere, but uh, hopefully we can finish this race just under a yellow flag at that section. So Speedworks having rebuilt the Toyota Corolla once, we're going to do it all over again as here. Look, Plato gets himself ahead of Oliphant on the road now. He was ahead on corrected times anyway, but Gordon Shedden is the real danger here, isn't he? Because now Flash is right there on the tail of the BMW. We've got yellow flags then as we start the last lap within the first sector. And this is what happened. So there's Bordley. Half it tucks in, uh, hits him up the... And then I think Butcher's going to collect him. Yeah! Didn't expect uh, Baudley to move forward, but uh, uh, unfortunate and messy end to their weekend. Indeed so. Right, on track, Sutton leads Hill. Josh Cook looking as though he's third, but he's a lap down, of course, having had to serve that stop-go penalty for the tyres not being fitted at the right part of the countdown. In fourth place, then, it is behind uh, Jason Plato, Gordon Shedden. Turkington is fifth, and Oliver now, with that penalty, is dropping down and down the order. Yeah, Hill can afford to let uh, Cook go through, um, but Plato is right there behind him. Plato is his danger man. That's right. And Shedden's not too far back either, so half a lap to go in what's been a really lively race. It's kept us guessing in terms of tyres and the weather all the way through. And every corner, the order has changed, and it's going to change again before the very end. But Ash Sutton to win is the easy bit. Josh Cook charges on, but he's a lap out of sync. So Ash Sutton is going to win round three of the Quick Fit British Touring Car Championship. He comes down to the chicane. Ash Sutton, reigning champion, is going to win race three of the day. But what's happening behind him? That's the story. Ash Sutton to come out of the chicane to win the race. The checker flag is at the ready. Ash Sutton wins, takes Will the it, flag. Will it be Hill or Plato? It's going to be Hill. He's going to be Plato, Plato on the line, he just does it. Jason Plato gets his nose in front, and he did it by seven hundredths of a second. Hill third, Shedden fourth, Dan Lloyd was fifth, Turkington down to sixth ahead of Oliphant. Still they come with Jack Goff eighth, ninth Jackson, and Stephen Jelly to round out the top ten. So Jason Plato 
second, right at the very end. Dan Robottom and Chris Smiley had pit stops. Here they come. They're still battling, but Robo's day is going to end a little bit further back than he wanted. He's lost a lap, of course, with that pit stop, so uh, he comes up towards the timing line. Showed good racecraft all day. Rick Parfit there gets ahead of teammate Tom Ingram, who lets him go on the run up towards the line. Fastest lap to Josh Cook. Ash Sutton, though, takes the race win. Oh, another race full of drama and full of great racing and illustrating the level of the driver in the championship because for those on the slicks to race the way they did when the rain was falling was mighty impressive, Jake Hill particularly. Yeah, I take my hat off to them for starting the race on the, on the slicks. It came to them and then they had to live with it right till the, the last minute when the rain came down. There you see Sutton coming across. Then we've got the drag race to the line. Plato up the inside of Hill and Shedden just behind them. And uh, in fairness, you've got champions in first, second and fourth place. So they showed their class there. They came through. Absolutely right. Colin Turkington in sixth, but he'll be content, if not happy, to at least have banked points. And Ash Sutton, again, proving A, how good he is, and B, how good the infinity is in inclement conditions. And uh, of those that have got some hard luck stories to tell, well, Josh Cook and Tom Ingram amongst them for their stop-go penalties that uh, were for not having the tyres fitted at the correct part of the countdown. Ash Sutton then, the race winner, heads to Park Ferme. And this is how close it was for second. Jason Plato just getting ahead of Jake Hill on the line. Another lap, Gordon Shedden could have been in there as well. But uh, a great battle between the... Uh, Boxall and the four drivers, and they came up towards the line, and Jason Plato just getting second place. So, Ash Sutton wins round three of the Quickfit British Touring Car Championship, ahead of Jason Plato just getting second from Jake Hill. Gordon Shedden taking fourth from the very back of the grid, don't forget, ahead of Dan Lloyd and Colin Turkington sixth. Oliphant seventh, Tom Oliphant ahead of Jack Goff, Ollie Jackson ninth, and Stephen Jelly in tenth place. Eleventh, Aaron Taylor-Smith ahead of Sam Osborne, Tom Chilton in 13th spot from Sam Smelt, and uh, then Chris Smiley rounding out the scorers ahead of Rick Parfit, 16th on his first weekend in the championship, Nick Hamilton 17th ahead of Adam Morgan, Jack Butel, and then a lap down, Josh Cook. 21st, Dan Robottom ahead of Tom Ingram, uh, Dan Camish 23rd, we lost Carl Bordley with damage, ditto Rory Butcher, Aidan Moffat had a mechanical problem, and it was the uh, damage carryover uh, from Jade Edwards' race two incident that put her out early on, sad to say. So, a great effort by Ash Sutton to come through to win the last race of the day. It's going to make it a fascinating championship situation as we go to Snetterton, our next stop on the 12th and 13th of June weekend. A uh, very different circuit, and I uh, don't know what the weather gods have in store for us there, but uh, it has been a great start to the championship, no question about that. Some great racing, lots to talk about, lots to discuss. Social media has lit up during the course of the day anyway, uh, and it will continue to do so, I'm sure, after uh, another really lively race. And uh, Aidan Moffat says, well done to teammate Ash Sutton. Uh, Jason Plato has had uh, a very, very good day as well. I think he's happy to be back in the touring car paddock, and he's proved that he can race at the front. Yeah, a sixth, a fifth, and a second. Mm. I mean, that is a strong start, Absolutely. isn't it? Yeah. He'd be very happy with that. That is the consistent good scoring that every driver is looking for. And he... Uh, Goes and thanks the team for its efforts. So, a uh, very good day for Power Max Racing. The squad. And uh, Jake Hill and Ash Sutton, again, two of the stars of the uh, race with slicks and wets, a choice of tyre. So, as far as the championship is concerned, it is Jake Hill who leads Thruxton ahead by a point of double race winner Josh Cook, Jason Plato third, Ash Sutton fourth, ahead of Dan Camish fifth, and Tom Ingram rounding out the top six. Seventh, Colin Turkington ahead of Dan Robottom, Tom Oliphant ninth, and Jack Goff in tenth in the standing. So, Jake Hill, after what